Hey guys, Bart from TST Industries here. Welcome to TST Garage. As you can see beside me here, I have Kawasaki Ninja ZX4RR. Our installation video today will also be valid for the single R model. What we're doing here is eliminating the pair components and also the EVAP components on this bike. This will be a track machine when we're done with it. So these, com these components need to come off. They are bulky, they are heavy, and they do not serve any purpose in the track environment. If you are a track rider, cool, good to go. If you're a street rider, please consider keeping these things on. They keep our environment clean and free of pollutants. All right, that being said, uh, we do have the bike ripped apart a little bit here. I believe that every single rider that is working on a bike, getting it towards track, uh, track prep, will have a slightly different version of how they do things. There's different body work that exists out there for this bike. There are different means of mounting different things. So we will not be concerning ourselves with the tear down to this point because it will be vastly different on the different machines built by different people. We have taken the tank off and some of the panels here to enable us access to the components that we'll need to be actually getting into. And we will start from here. When you eliminate some of the electrical components of the EVAP system and also the pair system, I'm gonna demonstrate here, but it's pretty much the same up here under the air box. When you remove the solenoid valve from the harness, the ECU will actually know, hey, something happened and now I'm gonna to have to throw an engine code. These engine codes are just annoyances. They're not really dangerous. Nothing's happening in the ECU. The ECU is just trying to tell you, hey, your, uh, your EVAP or pair or both are out. So we do have these dummy plug circuits. There's a little circuit in here that fools the ECU into thinking that this component is still in place. So if you are eliminating both of these systems, you will need two of these, one for the EVAP and one for up by the pair components. Now, if you are using a piggyback computer, uh, tuning this bike in other means than flashing, then these will be your solutions to not trip up the ECU. If you are sending your ECU in for one of our works tunes, like what we did here on ours, we can actually flash these errors out from the ECU when we are performing the performance flash on the ECU. And that way you will not need these components. So these will be redundant. So when you visit our website, tstindustries.com, you'll see that we sell these separately because a lot of people just take advantage of the flash and then you don't need to spend the money on this. Another set of components here are the block off plates for the pair valve inlets. We are going to be taking out the pair valve, the inlets, the reed valves underneath, and replacing those components with these very lightweight aluminum anodized plates. When we remove the EVAP system and the pair system, there will be a whole bunch of hoses that come off the bike from the air box, from the throttle bodies. So we've provided you with all the rubber caps necessary to block off those Hose connections, if you don't block them out, now you're letting atmospheric air into those orifices and you're throwing off your air fuel mi mixture and possibly introducing pollutants into your intake stream. You don't wanna do that. That's why we include those with our components. Now I've done a lot of yapping here and you guys are probably bored to hell. Let's start wrenching and get excited about what we're doing here. Now here we are with some steps already taken. I have this bolt out, I have the clamps to the throttle body mounts loosened. ECU needs to come off. I'm gonna carefully place it here on the side of the frame. I'm gonna dislodge the air box from the throttle bodies. All right, disconnect the temperature sensor here. Flip this over while being careful not to stress the fuel line. Now we already had these hoses off, so everything popped off. This is the hose that goes here, that stays. This is our crankcase vent hose, that stays. This is the hose that is connected to our pair system. So when this comes off from this location, we will cap that with the large cap that we've provided. 
We do not have a clamp for it. If you'd like to reuse a clamp from the bike, there are plenty of hoses that are coming off. I never find it necessary because the air box is under vacuum. So it'll keep itself on. All right, I'm gonna put this guy to the side. Let's maybe stuff some paper towels in here. Prevent giant debris from flying into our intake track. Here we have our pair system. It is connected electrically via this white plug. We can unplug that and immediately plug in one of our dummy plugs. We'll need to cinch this off somewhere. I like to use a zip tie and tie it up or tangle it in in between some other hoses and wires. I guess that's a pretty good location here. I'll just use a zip tie later on that. All right, we have this pair system here with the hose that came from the air box all the way to the valve. I need to pull back on this rubber boot exposing this fastener, which is a socket cap screw that receives a five millimeter Allen tool. We'll need to crack this loose. And then there is another screw of that type behind this on that same plate that is screwed into the valve cover. Now, when we remove this, we'll remove its counterpart on the left side of the bike that comes out and we'll go further. I think to make my life easier, I'm gonna slip off the whole pair of valve and hose system off of this. It'll give me more access. This comes off and now we have better access here to the screws. I've chosen a crude L wrench because it gives me more dexterity here in a, in a small space. Once you crack this loose, you can technically take it out by hand. These screws will be reused. this tying bracket that goes between the two pair valve covers that needs to be taken out. And then we get these covers out. This is an optional step here. I like to perform it because I'm removing redundant components. If we lift out the seal plate from the valve cover and turn it around, there are reeds in here. I will actually remove these reeds, remove the screws, get rid of those, and then put all, put the seal plate back. The reason being it does have a rubber gasket here. That's what I use to leave it in place so that it's sealed and we're not leaking atmospheric air into the valve cover area. If you prefer to just remove this entire component, you can run a tiny little bead of silicone on here and attach that to the valve cover. Tighten it down, good to go. Removing the reeds will require a Phillips screwdriver. I recommend you don't do this over the bike. I'm ju I just chose to do this here because we have the video view centered here. If you drop these screws, they're gonna be a pain to find. Screws and reeds come out. And now this is ready to go back in. It does have these bump outs for locating the reeds. Those are gonna go down towards the valve cover. Since I have that one ready for installation, I'm gonna put in one of these plates, put it in position, make sure I didn't clamp down on this rubber material and reuse the screws that we took out from this location. Gonna make sure my alignment with the valve cover is right. 
and then hand tighten these screws down. I'm gonna tighten them down. If you wanna torque these, I recommend going to 8.8 foot pounds and not beyond. If you're worried about vibrations, loosening the screws, you can use light or medium duty thread locking agent on there. And at this point, I'm just going to repeat the steps on the left side. That's all done. I'm gonna redistribute this rubber cover. And it's really meant just to keep hot air or the bulk of hot air from the radiator off of our air box. That helps with cooler air getting inside our combustion chamber. That's all good for power production. Now, before we hop over to the EVAP system, we are going to eliminate the connections from the EVAP system through hoses into the throttle bodies. For that purpose, I've loosened the bottom mounts of the throttle bodies. So technically I should be able just to pull them up. Let me see if we have, I'm gonna have to take this sensor off because we would not have slack here. Now these will pry up. Okay. Careful not to strain this fuel hose. If you feel more comfortable removing it before doing this work. That's probably a good idea. A word of caution here, we have open intake side of the head. If any of the valves are open at this point, if it's not in TDC, technically anything you drop in there is going in your combustion chamber and then it's gonna to be tough to fish it out. So, you can potentially replace the towels in here just to be on the safe side. And now this hose that has an array of four hoses stemming from it going to the intake side closest to the head, this is what we'll need to take off. This is the set of lines that is responsible for sucking out the fumes from the charcoal canister once they accumulate in there from the aerator from the gas tank. Technically, I should be able to just slip them off by hand. If they are being tough, I use a set of pliers and then spin them first. That breaks them loose. That rubber likes to get baked on the nipples. So we slip these black hoses off. There are four of them going into a junction of one larger diameter hose. Now we've exposed these four nipples. We are going to use the caps that we've provided with your kit over these nipples. They just slip on and they seal up these passages. That way we're not allowing atmospheric air to enter into our intake track. Before I put these throttle bodies back down, I'm going to fish out these hoses all the way to the side of the bike. I don't wanna have to go back in here. All right. Now let's ditch the towels. Get our throttle body back in place. Once they are seated, replace any connectors you have taken off 
and then tighten down the clamps. We are going to just stuff them for now because we're not going to be going into the detail of reinstallation of all the components. At this point, I'm going to grab a zip tie and tie off my dummy plug here. These two looms are a really good candidate. This will prevent our connector, connector from slapping around, possibly damaging the circuit. Doesn't have to be very tight, just located. Now, as previously, run it through here, tuck it away so that the airbox doesn't interfere with it. And now we can hop on over to the left side of the bike and start the EVAP removal procedure. Let's identify some of the components here we'll be working with. You have the charcoal canister, you have your EVAP connector into the solenoid, and you have a bunch of hoses. And then there's a bracket that actually carries all these components here. All this stuff will need to be removed. So let's start with the electrical. Pull this plug out. Replace our dummy plug circuit in there. That's ready to go. We'll just zip tie it off later. Then let's follow the hoses here. This is the hose array that I took off the throttle bodies. For now, I'm just gonna remove the split and leave the hose here. Now back at the canister. This strap needs to come out. It does have a pull tab on it. If you pull down and towards inboard the bike, it'll enable you to slip off the D-ring. Top will come off and now the canister is free to move around. Grab my pliers, get the hose clamps off of these hoses. Slip past the barb, should be good to go. Now I'm gonna mush them around and spin them, that breaks them free. Canister comes off, put it to the side. Now, this hose here used to route from the charcoal canister to the tank, to the aerator circuit inside the tank. Now, if we just leave that open, the aerator circuit will be emptying into atmospheric here next to the tank. What I like to do is run a long enough hose back towards the belly of the bike so that those fumes have a way to escape down here and out the side, not right under the rider's nose. So I'm gonna remove this hose, but remember it's routing. Then, this longer hose here that went to the throttle bodies, that is actually what I'm going to use here on the tank, on the aerator in the tank, and I'm just gonna route it differently. So let's get it out of its routing guides first. It is clipped in behind the rectifier here on a bracket. Once you unclip it, it's pretty free to move. Slip it off that solenoid there. Comes off and then we want to route it to here somewhere. Potentially, yeah, this is a better side for it because it has a larger orifice. And then we're gonna retain the hose clamp that came off with it. So this is how I would route it. so inclined you could take this hose piping off of the hose this protective sheath it's redundant and it's extra weight you can make that judgment yourself so somewhere in this area will be good it may have to go forward of the tank support we'll make that determination when the tank is going back on obviously we don't want to kink these hoses now this hose goes back here and follows the same routing as this one I'm gonna take off, actually take off the bottom part of this. It does have a coupler, you can take that off. And if you're so inclined, you can zip tie these together so they don't flop around on you, like so. So one of these is a overflow hose. 
And the one we just routed is going to be the aerator hose. Don't want to cinch them too tight. We'll clamp them and they will not pass gases through. This looks good to me. This is ready to go back on the tank. Leave it in here. Let's get rid of the bracket that carried the charcoal canister and the EVAP um, solenoid. Three 10 millimeter screws. Now all of these components are out. We have this dangling plug here. Again, I like to protect this from dangling. It can repeatedly hit a component and get damaged, so we don't want that. Let's tie it off here. All right, and that's pretty much it. Every step beyond this is the reverse order of disassembly. All right, guys, uh, we're pretty much done here. Obviously, we're not gonna show you the rebuild of this bike because like I said, everybody's got slightly different uh, setups. So it'll just be the reverse order of disassembly that got you here. I just went and weighed this versus the components that replaced this. And uh, there is a one kilogram difference. So we dropped 2.2 pounds by removing all these things. And now we will be able to zero in or on more precise tune for this bike because now we won't have the outside air polluting our airstream. I wanna thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, check it out at tsdindustries.com. We have these parts ready to go on our website, ready for you to buy. We also have a whole package worth of parts for this bike and that package is growing. Uh, we also have other parts for other bikes you may have in your stable. So I hope you check out tstindustries.com and ride safe. See you later.